morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to have to move that slide one more time. There we go. Happy Father's Day. The ladies, they, they got flowers. I'm sorry, they probably died. <laughs> And they say, a father like you is hard to find, one who's honest, strong, wise, and kind. Uh, Denise, I'm going to give it to Steve. Yeah. We have a tendency to make a big deal about the ladies and uh, mother's day and stuff. <laughs> Wanted to do something nice for the guys this, uh, for today. It's a big day. Um, being a father is not an easy thing in this world. And so I'm looking forward to hearing Mark's message today for Father's Day. What is your legacy? So, but before we get there, we've got some announcements and we've got some singing. <laughs> Mark, you're going to have a real good close up on the, on the video. Oh. But we're gonna have we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> play away. Um, Wednesday night, uh, seven o'clock, we'll have an evening of worship and prayer again, um, devotional time, some singing, and then certainly our prayer time. And then it's coming up a lot faster. <laughs> it just seems the time keeps speeding up. But on the tenth of July, we will be having Orange Track in the morning and our movie Courageous in the evening. And, uh, for those of you online, we'll post the link up to uh, the time and the date and the movie trailer we'll put out there for you. Uh, since we can't show that live online, they get a little fussy about that with licensing. But we'll put it out there so you can watch that as well. Uh, for those of you here, at the end of the service today, we'll have that as well. So that you can uh, tear up a little bit as we prepare to see that movie, which is about fatherhood. So, really neat thing to have going on. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the worship team and I'm going to worship God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Terry. It's always great to be here, especially today on Father's Day. And we just, uh, we just have the Holy Spirit come dwell with, within our midst. And, and we want the Holy Spirit to dwell where you're at today, too. Uh, even though you may be watching us. From a distance, it's not a distance at all for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and, and uh, that brings us all together as community.
church was struggling with their music and they had different factions of the church that, that wanted to do different styles of music and, uh, and, and they just couldn't agree. And it was to the point where it was breaking the church up. And so the praise team took a break and just didn't play at all. And then God put this music on their hearts and when they came back to church again for the first time to play again all they did was play this one song that said we need to be at the heart of worship, whether it's whether it's contemporary Christian music, whether it's old hymns, whether it's something we haven't even tried yet. The point is we need to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
as I think about the passage that Mark picked up for our call to worship this morning, which comes from Joel chapter 1, verse 3. Honestly, as I was driving here this morning, I was driving across one of the bridges downtown, and I saw a young lady walking down in the rain, but you could tell that she was down. You could tell that she was probably under the influence of some substance, and the heart broke. Because what this passage is saying was not given to her. See, in Joel 1 3, it says, Tell it to your children, and let your children tell it to their children, and their children to the next generation. My heart breaks for everyone like that young lady. And I know we do as much as we can for our kids. We, the, the grandkids all have gotten little Bibles when they were born, and as they get older, we're giving them ones that are more appropriate for their age. Diane's appropriately uh, been tagged as Grandma Veggie Tail because <laughs> at one point we had well, if you stack them up, they probably put it on here. And then, you know, you have to get one for each of the kids' families. So we've got Kelly in Waterloo and, and Ashlyn and Briar in Webster City. So there were at least two, sometimes three, because, you know, we had to have a copy of the house, too. Because we want them to know God. We want them to have a relationship with Jesus. We want them to know this. We want our. We want to tell our children, and we continue to tell our children. I've even told my parents. Went the other direction with it. But we want them to continue this, because if we don't continue this, then that leads us into Mark's question for today. What is your legacy? Father God, as Pastor Mark prepares to come up here and give your message for this morning, Father, we ask that you would just take over and fill this place. Let everyone who's watching here in person and online hear your words. And not just hear them, Father, but take them to heart. And then act on them. Not just going, oh, that was a good sermon. And forgetting about it, Father. Let it be something that continues to run through our minds on the weeks months and years ahead. That legacy that we're leaving behind, what is that? But let's pass to Mark and the message you've given him this morning. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Terry, and happy Father's Day to everybody out here. And, uh, I think it's an absolutely awesome day today. We needed rain, and, and we've been just absolutely starved for rain, and, and God blessed us with rain today. And it cleanses, and it nourishes. And so there's more than just water falling from the sky, but it, it's a nourishment, it's a gift from God. It's, it's a blessing that uh, God gives to us each and every day. So I'm a father. And I'm also a son. And I'm a grandfather. And we had spent time with kids and fathers and grandfathers, great-grandfathers. We were all gathered together yesterday at the house. And, and it was a wonderful time to be together. But my legacy is, and what I want people to know, is that I'm a child of the Most High God. See, I've got God the Father. I've got Dad sitting back here. I've got God the Father. And my legacy is that I am a child of the Most High God. I am a child of God, and I, I need to carry that with me each and every day, and I need to wear that on my heart for others to see. And each father in here that's in here, and every son that's in here, I challenge you to wear that on your heart each and every day for everybody else to see. See, a father is a man in relationship to his child or children. 
And these are the definitions that we'll find in the dictionary. A man who adopts a child is a father. A man who raises a child is a father. And someone once said that it takes only a few seconds to father a child, but it takes a lifetime to be a father. And I hope that sinks in your heart because that, that is so true. That is so true. To be a father is more than just simply fathering a child. It's being able to raise them up properly. To give them the attributes that your father has given to you. And in Joel today, we, we said, tell it to your children and tell it to their children and their children to the next generation. And see, that's called a legacy. So what legacy are you leaving for your children? Is my question for everybody today. And I can't think of any need of childhood as strong as the need for a father's protection. That came from Sigmund Freud. And another one, Debbie, or I'm sorry, Don Frank said, It was my father who taught me to value myself. He told me that I was uncommonly beautiful and that I was the most precious thing in his life. And that child will carry that message through their entire life. And they will live out parts of those things that you tell your children, good or bad, through the rest of their life. And see, that's your legacy. That's a part of your legacy. So at Mother's Day, I, I read a poem and, and it talked about, uh, it was a tribute to mothers. And it, was, it talked about all the values and things that we get from our mothers. And so today for Father's Day, I want to share with you uh, this writing as well and it's it's called praise those fathers let us praise those fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work and marriage and children with honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice let us praise those fathers who lacking a good model for a father have worked to become worthy and virtuous fathers let us praise those fathers who by their own account were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children, now grown, their love and support. As well, let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by words and the actions of their children. Let us praise those fathers who, despite marital discord, have remained in their children's lives. Let us praise those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has nurtured a thriving life. A thriving life. Let us praise those fathers who as stepfathers freely chose the obligation of fatherhood and earned their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us praise those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold that child let us praise those men who have no children but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. Let us praise those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. Let us praise those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And let us praise those fathers who have died but live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. Let us praise those fathers. See, that's what Father's Day is all about. Giving back to our fathers who have given us so much. And each and every day of our lives, we should be giving back to our Father in Heaven who has given us all of our being, all of the days of our lives. Fatherhood is worth celebrating. It's part of God's strategy together with a, with a mother in creating an environment of love and acceptance and belief and security. There are those in this world today that would say that the role of the father is not really necessary, but see, that's just blatantly false. Blatantly false. 82% of the research done since 1980 shows overwhelming that when a father is present in bringing a positive influence in a child's life, there's an increase in self-esteem greater discipline and respect 
and preparation for the real world. They have a far greater chance of success both in life and in their own relationships as well when that Father is present throughout their life. And throughout Scripture, the importance of a Father, His presence in His children's life just keeps coming up over and over again, and it sure reflects something of the heart of the Father God for His children, our fathers, in gen gently teaching and correcting us God's sense of foundation for parenting, and we would do well to follow and obey his word and his example. So what example are you leaving, fathers, for your children? What is your legacy? What is your legacy? Proverbs 4, 1 through 9 says, Hear, O sons, a father's instruction. Be attentive that you may gain insight, for I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast to my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget. And do not turn away from the words of my mouth. So in my message that I gave on how well do you Christian, I talked about kids that were raised by a nanny. And so the parents lost out on the, on the childhood of their kids. But by the same token, they got the care and nurturing of a stranger and not their own parents. What is their legacy to their children? It reminds me of a song from the 1970s by Harry Chapin, and I was going to kind of hit Bruce, and I said, let's play the song today, but he hasn't been feeling real well, so I didn't want to put that on anything. The words go like this. My child arrived just the other day, and he came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. He was talking before I knew it, and as he grew, he'd say, hmm. I'm going to be like you, Dad. I'm going to be like you. And as the lyrics were going through my head, it caused me to reflect, because I traveled a lot when my kids were young. And these words pierced my heart. Pierced my heart. I always made time for my kids, but I'm not sure I made enough time for my kids. And as those lyrics were going through my head, it caused me to reflect on the father I had been to my children. And I came up with this thought. The life that we live life to live with our children is the legacy that we give them. The life that we live with our children is the legacy that we give them. See, I think that's true to our very hearts. What legacy will live on long after you're gone? So the song continues on. I've long since retired, my son's moved away. I called him up just the other day and I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I could find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids got the flu, but it's sure been nice talking to you. It's been sure nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he'd grown up just like me. My boy. See, when I was writing this, <laughs> I was going, what great example of a legacy. What great example of a legacy. So I want you to keep asking yourself as we hear the message today, what is the legacy that you are leaving behind long after you're gone? What legacy are you leaving behind? One of the greatest gifts a father can give his child is time. Time spent playing 
reading, talking, teaching, laughing, but most of all, loving, loving. And I think children crave that attention and become dejected, withdrawn, when they don't have it. And that is the beginning of issues that can develop in a child's life. If we don't take care of our children, who will? When I think about the gangs and, and the children's involvement in the gangs and things like that, they're looking for a family. They're looking for someone who will pay attention to them. And when I see these problems develop within our society today, it's because we've failed in our role as parents. We failed. There's a story about a little boy who once asked his dad, how many did you work, work, earned at work per hour? And the father, who always seemed to be busy on a phone call or a laptop, was annoyed that his son should be asking him a question. He finally says, $40 an hour, if you must know. Now go to bed and quit bothering me. Now later on, the father felt pretty guilty about being that hard on his son, so he goes up to see him. As he comes to the door, he hears his son pray. Lord, I just need another $15 so I can buy an hour of my father's time. I just need $15 more. Please, God. <clears throat> and that breaks my heart. <laughs> you can probably tell I have her time writing this message today. Because I was convicted by this message. This message is as much for me as it is for anybody here. As fathers and parents, we have a few short years to make an impact on our children that will set them up for life. Sadly, many people today find themselves going down all kinds of wrong paths often because they either lack the presence of a father figure in their early development or subject to abuse or just bad parenting. Colossians 3, 1 says, Fathers, do not provoke or irritate or fret your children. Do not be hard on them or harass them, lest they become discouraged and sullen and morose and feel inferior and frustrated. And in other words, that means do not break their spirit. Do not break your child's spirit. Some years ago, staff at a maximum security prison in the States offered every man a card to write and send to his mother for Mother's Day. And every prisoner took a card. A few months later, the same offer was made for Father's Day. But not one inmate collected a card from the office to send them to their fathers. What an indictment on the fathers that they had growing up and abstaining from their roles of developing their children. How many lives have been ruined as a result of their fathers abstaining from those roles? Sadly, we just end up multiplying this through the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. As our call to worship today, I couldn't find a more apropos call to worship because it says to tell it to your children and your children to their children and to the next generation and on and on. See, that's the legacy I'm talking about. What a responsibility we have to power children. Wes Stafford, the former CEO of Compassion International, once said, every child you need is a divine appointment. Every child you need is a divine appointment. Maybe today on Father's Day, this would be a good moment to recommit to being a hero for our daughters and role model for our sons. But not just to them, but where we can invest is in other lives, young lives as well. 
those who need it, those who may not have the benefit of a loving, caring parent. Around the world, there's many loving fathers that they despair that they can't provide for their families because of the trap of poverty. Not just that, but millions of children face the challenge of having to grow up very fast because of a lack of parenting within their home. A father is sick with HIV, an alcoholic father who beats his children, his wife, and his kids. Fathers who may have left home because they don't know how to feed their ten children at home. Or maybe that child has never known a father in their life. Their fathers may have stepped down for their responsibility and do not father their kids. Yet in the midst of this, there are those who have stepped up to become stepfathers to try and give that kids a fighting chance in life. There's a lot of dynamics in our society today, and unfortunately, children are sometimes the casualty of worldliness and worldly desire. Do not deny your children. Do not turn away from your children. Give them a living legacy in you. While our earthly fathers may fail us in countless ways, God the Father will never fail us. He loves us with a love that isn't based on anything that we do. Our Father God, like His love, will never stray. He will always be there waiting on us, beckoning us back when we stray. He doesn't have to have emotions like we do. That come and go with the bad and mind. He doesn't have to lash out at us in anger, but will gently rebuke us so that we can grow. See, He is the perfect Father. And every one of us in this room today is a child of the Most High God. We have a perfect Father in Him. Psalms 139, 1 through 24 says, You have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, and you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before the word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. If I go up to the heavens, you are there, and if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, and if I settle on the far side of the sea, even your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast, and if I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is as light. For you have created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's wombs, and I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. If only every child could have that verse taught to them, not just read to them, but taught to them. By your actions, by your deeds, by your works, by your living in their life. And I do mean living in their life. In these verses, David tells us how great the Heavenly Father that we have. He will never leave us or forsake us. By His favor, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He is giving us His favor. And a favor is an endowment that we get. From God. By His favor, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. If we obey Him, He will give us the attributes of His heart, and He will guide and direct us by the leading of His Spirit. This is the way of our Heavenly Father, that's found in John 14, 16, and 17. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you an advocate to help you and be with you forever. 
It's called the spirit of truth. The word world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. God knew you before you were born and you were created in his image. And through progressive sanctification, we are gradually changed into that image of God. Progressive sanctification, it is instantaneous. It means as we live out our lives in obedience with God, we will be transformed into His image. His image. Colossians 1, 16 and 17 says, For Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominion or rulers or authorities, all things created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. So we are told in the scriptures that he has created the world for us and give us dominion over it. And he has given us purpose in our life. And that is to know God to serve God. And it goes on in Corinthians 8, 6, for, but for us there is only one God, the Father. Everything came for Him and we live for Him. There is only one Lord, Jesus Christ. Everything came into being through Him and we live because of God is not some entirely distant, unknowable being. He has given us his word so that we can know him completely as we sit on this side of eternity. We live our lives in obedience out of love and gratitude and ador adoration for our Father who's in heaven. God loves us and he is the perfect Father. So even when our earthly fathers fail us, let us seek to know him more and to bring him glory in all that we do. That's our legacy. As we close out today's message, if you still have the opportunity, I want you to go forth and always let your father know how much you appreciate him in your life. Thank him for all that he has done for you. Don't wait for that special occasion to let him know how special he is to you. As our fathers age, we come to the realization that they won't always be with us. Never take your father for granted. And life at times get busy for all of us. But no, don't neglect, it, neglect that phone call and that visit because it means so much to me. Our fathers gave us support and encouragement as we grew and now, give back to your Father all that he gave you. As the saying goes, any man can be a father, but it takes a special man to be a dad. So today I say, let your dad know how much he is loved and appreciated. See, because that may become our legacy as well. If we truly consider the legacy that we will leave our children, let it be one of love and care for our family. Let it be one of love and care for our friends. Let it be one of faith and belief in a loving and caring God. One who is prepared a place for us and welcomes us home to be together with him again. Let us pray. Lord, let us pray for the fathers in our lives. We give our thanks, Father God, for the fathers in our lives. See, fatherhood doesn't come with a manual. And reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. But we ask your blessings for all of them and forgiveness where it's needed. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices that fathers make for their children and families in ways both big and small. 
We lift our children to achieve dreams beyond which they thought were reachable. So too, we remember all those who have stepped up and stepped in to help fill the void. When fathers pass on early or absent in their lives, grandfathers, uncles, brothers, cousins, teachers, pastors, coaches, and the women of our families. Those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children. Let us live according to your example, our perfect Father in heaven. Thank you, O oh God. In your holy name we pray. Amen. our Heavenly Father. See, in communion we are giving thanks and praise to God for His Son when we break the bread and we share the cup. And we do so as we bless the name of our Lord. Communion always points back to the cross. It always points back to Jesus and what He did for us. And we, as the church, we belong to Jesus. We are united with all believers around the world in a very special way when we break the bread. It's nothing short of amazing as I think about that. First Corinthians 11, 23 through 26 from the ESV says it this way, For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. represents and for what you have done for us, Father. You sent your Son, giving us the ultimate gift. Father, let it be, just as our call of worship scripture this morning, that we take this message that you've given us and this, this wonderful thing that you've done for us, and then we tell our children about it, and then we pray. We pray that they will tell their children about it. And Father, we pray that that will continue on and on and on until your son does return. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.
you know, last week I brought you names of songs that spoke to me, and uh, Wednesday we sang a beautiful song, of Good God Almighty, and um, we sang it together as a group, and it was just amazing. And uh, so I feel like God put this on my heart this week, these five songs, and I kind of wrote them into a story. So I hope that um, they'll resonate with you as they resonated with me. But before I start, um, is there anybody that needs prayer this morning? Other than Steve and Larry? Diane? Susan and Dan Hester, and Father God, we just pray that you be with them. Comfort their hearts and minds as they go through this time of suffering and rearranging and redoing everything in their life. Just be with them and comfort them, Father God, in Jesus' holy name. So, this is what came to my heart this week. And, uh, this happens. It's so unusual. Well, before I start, sorry, I should list the five songs so you know who they are. I don't want to take their words. Uh, the five songs are Hold On To Me by Lauren Daigle, Good God Almighty by Crowder, Help Is On The Way by Toby Mack, Fully Known by Torrin, and It Is Well by Bethel Music. So this is how I arrange the words. <coughs> it is so unusual, it's frightening, that you see right through the mess inside me. You pull me out to start again. It's so like you to keep pursuing me. It's so like me to go astray. But you guard my heart with your truth and kindness, a love that's bulletproof. And I'll surrender to your kindness. You won't let go no matter what I do. So hold on to me when the best of me is barely breathing. When I'm not someone who I believe in, hold on to me when it's too dark to see you. Hold on to me when I forget I need you. When I'm sure I've reached the end, when I don't feel like I'm worth defending, when I start to break into depression, hold on to me. So let it go, my soul. And trust in him, the waves and wind still know his name. It may be midnight or midday. It's never early, it's never late. He will stand by what he claims. Sometimes it's days, sometimes it's years. Some face a lifetime of falling tears. But he's in the darkness, he's in the cold. Just like midday, he always shows. For you are good God Almighty. I hope you'll find me, praising your name no matter what comes. Because where would I be without your mercy? Praising your name at the top of my lungs. I'll praise you in the morning. I'll praise you at noontime. Praise you when the sun goes down because I am fully known and loved by you. And through it all, through it all, it is well with me. So, let's go to prayer. Good God Almighty, I thank you for the words to these songs. I thank you for the artists that write them. I thank you that we can still find you in the darkest times of our lives. We may not always feel your presence, but I know you are always working for our good. So today I just pray for Steve and Larry and these people um, that Diane has mentioned and, um, and the people who need prayer that, that haven't spoke about anything. And um, I just pray that you feel that they feel your loving touch today. Please give them assurance that you are always working for their good. Comfort their minds and hearts as only you can. And may the blood of Jesus wash over them and heal them and help them to know that you are God. 
And we thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you do in our lives. We praise your holy name each and every day. And help us not to forget, even in the darkest times, that you are there. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. It's been a very emotional service today. Um, just when you thought it was safe, I do have something to say. Um, the Bible clearly sets aside certain men that are elders and leaders. And Harold, I, I want to talk to you right now just for a minute from my heart. You are very special elder in this church and your leadership and devotion is beyond anything I have could hope to be myself and your willingness to play a father role at our wedding this year means the most to me you and I have been in the depths together and we've been in the mountaintop together and and uh, I know you love this song and and I just wanted to tell you, you're a father to all of us. Amen. 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 Thanks. <laughs>
Let's go to God in thanks and praise and prayer, shall we? Lord, our world is a crisis today, and we need you to change our hearts. Father God, on this Father's Day, help us to restore trust and redeem relationships. Help us to overcome what the thro world throws at us and help us to help others to overcome the world as well. We alone are not capable of bringing communities back together, but nothing, nothing is impossible for you, Father God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Grant us the wisdom and help us to show them the gift of restoration for families, mm -hmm. for communities, for break for races and broken lives. For someone is in need to forgive. Give them the strength to forgive. Where someone needs to admit fault, give them the humility to admit fault. Embolden us today to reach out and empower us to help provide help and equip us to be your hands and feet to bring that help and that message to our broken world. Lord, help us today to leave a legacy love as you have shown us how to love. Teach that love to our children and them to their children and them to generations. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your power, for your grace. 